Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where you'll hear the craziest stories about people who think they deserve everything they want. Guys, before we dive into today's stories, take a look at this. So if you've been a listener for a while, you've know that I've read numerous stories about Entitled Karens trying to buy other people's kids, and some have commented that there's no way that this is real. Nobody in their right mind would demand to buy a baby. Well, check this out. This woman right here, Rebecca Taylor. Now, Rebecca Taylor was arrested for attempting to buy another woman's child at Walmart. Always Walmart, right? So a mom was in a Walmart checkout line when all of a sudden, a woman comes up to her and begins commenting on how nice her son's blue eyes and blonde hair was. And then she asked how much she could buy him for. Now, obviously, the mom thought the woman was joking because who the heck does that, right? And to further sweeten the deal, she then tells the mom, I have $250,000 cash in my car. If you come to my car right now with me, I will buy your son. Now, obviously, the mom said no amount of money would do. And I know what you're thinking, moms. Some days, just some days. Little Timmy drives you so crazy. $250,000 might not be a bad trade-off. And that's not even the crazy part, guys. The crazy part is, when the mom denied it, she waited for the mom and the kid to leave the Walmart and began to harass her in the parking lot. She then screamed at the mom, If you don't give me your kid for $250,000, I will pay half a million dollars cash for him. $500,000 because she wanted him and she was going to take him. So long story short, the mom obviously says no. And then the woman gets in her SUV and she drives off and then the police caught up with her. So she's now facing a minimum of two years in prison, up to 10 years if found guilty. But crazy, right? If you don't let me buy him, I'm gonna take him anyways. Is that entitled or crazy or crazily entitled? Guys, if you think that was worth a head shake, wait until you hear the stories in this one. My friends, I do hope you enjoy the super entitled stories today and do remember to hit that subscribe button for future tales. And also email link is gonna be in the description if you guys wanna submit your stories or crazy news articles like this one to me. I've been dating my girlfriend for about a year now. So this kind of discussion has been popping up here and there for the entire year that we've been together. We've had a lot of fun together, and most of the time, it's great in every way. I'm 31 years old, and she's 29 years old. We're not married. So one day, we were having a conversation about relationships and what people in mixed culture couples want and ask from each other, as well as differences between men and women. So my girlfriend then tells me this. She said to me, you're not good enough for me, but you're the best I could find. But I love you. So a little more background. I'm North European and she's from Central Asia, which means that we do have some cultural differences to overcome. We've been living together in my apartment for most of the time we've been together. I work and make decent money in engineering and she makes twice what I make. My girlfriend wants me to get a better job so that I make as much as she does, or almost or even more. Now, what bothers me is that she wants me to make all that money. So I'll be able to provide her with money to pursue her hobby in fashion and to buy her dresses and all the jewelry she wants when she stops working. During our conversation, I found out from her that she believes it's natural for the man to pay for everything in the relationship, including the house, food, cars, expenses, etc., while she spends her money on herself and then contributes whatever she feels like, even when she's working and making twice what I make. So for me, the natural thing is to share expenses and contribute more or less equally since we're a couple and we live together. This is very hard for her to understand. From my point of view, she seems really entitled to special treatment. I basically worry that she'll treat me like I'm worthless if I won't be her little dog and give her what she wants. That's the feeling I get. I just can't get my head around her expectations. Is it just cultural differences that I can accommodate to some degree? Or is it her deep character? That mindset bothers me a lot. Like, what's going on here? I'm just trying to understand or rather figure out if it's worth staying. Thanks, people. Oh, she's also paying half the expenses for the apartment, but very reluctantly. It sounds to me like she's super entitled and clearly looking for a sugar daddy to take care of her while she coasts in life. Engineers do make pretty good money, guys, and OP says that she makes double what he makes, so I'm assuming she might be mid one fifty to $200,000, which, hey, good for her. Now, I personally think that OP needs to break this off because it's definitely not worth staying. She clearly said, you are not good enough for me. You're the best I could find. 
Guys, girls, listen to Papa Fluff. If anybody ever says that to you, you need to tell them to pack their bags and get out of your face because if you don't cut it off, they eventually will when they find someone who is good enough for them. So I got married a couple of years ago. It was a small wedding with our close friends and family, and it went along smoothly. Now at first, my mother agreed to come. Then five weeks before we got married, she said, I can't come because it's on a Sunday and I'll miss church. Now I wasn't bothered by this, and I just said, okay, because it wasn't like I was truly missing anything by her not being there anyway. So five weeks pass and the wedding prep's done, and we've made sure to work around those who've had to cancel as well as a few extra things. So the day before the wedding, my mother sends my wife and I this long paragraph that basically boils down to, God told me that church is more important than your wedding. Which is weird, since my grandparents, who are very frequent churchgoers, decided to skip church that day and watch their granddaughter get married. So we just reply, uh, okay. And then we laugh about it and then move on. So the day of the wedding comes and everything runs smoothly. A ton of photos are uploaded to the book of faces, and then my mother sees it. So a couple of hours into the night, I'm with my in-laws and a couple of friends, and my phone buzzes. I open it up, and lo and behold, it's my mother. Now, the message from this oh-so-lovely entitled woman boils down to this. She says, I can't believe you didn't include me in the wedding. You replaced me. You replaced your own mother with your mother-in-law and dad's wife. I can't believe you. Now, I just responded with, it's not replacing mom. You didn't show up to the wedding, so it's not my problem. She then started calling me several times and left voicemails of her crying, yelling, screaming, and basically throwing a tantrum, saying how just because she went to church instead of my wedding doesn't mean she didn't want to go. Then why didn't you go? It was at this point I knew she was trying to play some weird manipulation game with me, so I just muted her and let her ride the wave of whatever the heck she was on. She then PM'd my mother-in-law and started spamming her with strange drunk nonsense, in which my mother-in-law then blocked her and didn't respond. She then calls me a few days later crying and asking me to please forgive her, saying she just wants her daughter to love her. I responded with, don't contact me unless it's absolutely an emergency. So Opie does come into the comments and say that her mom basically chose God over her that day, as she'd rather go to church on a Sunday than to watch her own daughter marry another woman. It's ridiculous though, how the heck did she expect to not show up to an event and then have the audacity to get pissed off that she wasn't included? Good on OP for going no contact with her because a person like this is definitely so toxic. Okay, so for a little backstory, I live in a nice house. It's right on the beach, and I do take good care of it and my garden, so it's not strange to see people admiring my home when they're on walks. Also, I don't like driving, so I usually bike everywhere, and I do have a pool in my backyard. On to the story. So I just had a long day at work and had a few groceries with me on my bike. As I pull into my street, I see a line of people blocking my driveway. Like, full blocking. I pull onto the sidewalk and start walking my bike towards the group. Now, the people in the story are Karen and her two friends. And her kids. The three of them are standing in a group, and I overhear a woman talking about how she's so happy for Karen, and how beautiful her new home is. Now, I'm thinking, hmm, that's odd. I don't recall any house around me being for sale or sold to anybody, so I try to pass the group of women to get to my garage. I say out loud, hey, can I get past, please? Now, the Karen just says, go around. Can't you see we're busy? Now, at this, I say, oh, I just need to drop my bike in the garage, and then I'll be out of your way. I'm glad you like the house, though. I do try to take care of it. Now at this point, friend number one says, Um, I think you might be confused. Karen lives here. I say to the group, No, this is my house. I live here. I don't know her at all. At this, Karen chimes in and says, Okay, you're obviously trying to break into my house. Get away before I call the police. And I say to them, No, you need to leave. This is my house. At this, Karen screams, I will not get off my property. Now, at this point, I just push past and head towards the garage, and that's when I hear the splashing in my backyard. Now, nobody should be in my pool. I drop my bike, run to the backyard, and see three kids swimming in my swimming pool. Okay, I've had enough of whatever's going on. I raise my voice, and I tell them to get out. Two kids get out, but they're obviously confused, while one boy stays in. The kid that stays in says, My mommy says I can swim. Go away. 
I told him, no, this is my pool. I'm so sorry, but you're not allowed to be here. This is my home. Now, Karen hears this, and she marches up to me and says, hey, don't talk to my son like that. Get off my property. Now, at this point, her two friends are looking confused, and she says, Karen, what's going on? Who's this girl? Now, I'm panicking at this point with a mix of rage, and I said, well, prove it. Prove that you live here. Karen's second friend starts to pull her away, and she says, Hey, Karen, why don't we just go inside? The kids shouldn't be around this. Karen's friend then looks at me and says, If I don't get off this property, they'll have no choice but to call the police. I said, No, you're not going into my home. And Karen says, Yes, we are. We're going inside. Now go away before I call the police. Now, I don't know what this woman's trying to do, but this is clearly not gonna work. I then said to her, Fine, go inside. I dare you to get in. At this point, Karen leads her group of friends away, and then the group climbs the stairs, and obviously she didn't think this through. Only two keys to this house exist. One key for me, and one key for my sister. I can see and hear the woman at my front door, telling her friends that she must have grabbed the wrong key, and that they're locked outside now. I then lock up my bike, grab my groceries, and push past them, saying, Excuse me, if you don't mind, I'm going into my home. Her two friends look at me in disbelief as I unlock the door with my key, go inside, and shut the door. As I close the door and lock it, Karen's banging on my door, screaming how she's gonna call the cops on me for breaking into her home. I ended up calling the cops on her. So the group of women end up standing in my yard for a little while longer, while Karen was acting furious that someone was in her house. She then ran off as soon as she saw the cop cars and the friends stayed behind very confused. They explained to the police that Karen had told them that this was her house and that they were just gonna go swim in her new pool and then head to the beach so they would never go in the house. Later on, no charges are pressed and I hope the Karen did learn her lesson. What an absolutely ridiculous story. Hey, fake it till you make it, right? And in this case, fake it until you get caught. That is just so embarrassing to think about. Guys, she literally walked up to some random person's front door and tried to unlock it with a key that she knew wouldn't work. If I was that Karen, I would totally ghost at that point. I'd be dead from embarrassment. What do you even say to your two friends after that? Oh, I lied. That's not my house. I was pretending. So a little backstory. My mom was in an accident when she was 14 years old, and she lost her right arm. She has about a quarter of that arm left, and she calls that her stub. And to be honest, the loss hasn't done much to derail her. Honestly, she's my hero, but here you are for the story, so here goes. So my mom and I go to the supermarkets at busy hours on the weekend, because we couldn't make our usual after-school weekday trip when things were less crazy. We go around the whole parking lot twice, as do a row of cars behind us, and we finally managed to nab a disabled spot right by the entrance because someone was leaving as we approached. Now, my mother rarely uses disabled parking, even though she's permitted and she has a placard, because she always says that people who can't walk need it more. But again, she's permitted and there weren't any other spaces. So after we park and get out, we hear a car honk a few times, followed by an excuse me as a woman runs up from behind catching us just before the entrance to the store. Now this woman literally left her car running in the middle of a busy parking lot, causing a massive pileup. So Karen catches our attention with her shouting, and that's when we turned around. We are greeted with the can I speak to the manager haircut, and about half a dozen kids, ranging from goth tween to a toddler in her arms. Karen then goes on to explain how the spot my mom just parked in is for disabled people, in an accusatory tone. My mom was wearing her prosthetic arm underneath her long sleeve denim coat, which is overly big, so the fingers of her prosthetic were barely visible. So it was an honest mistake, even though it was a little odd that she abandoned her car and ran up to us with her entire litter. Still, my mom smiles and proclaims, don't worry, I'm allowed to park there. And we turn back around. Now apparently that answer wasn't good enough for Karen. Suddenly, Karen and her kids are in front of us, and she's given the toddler to another child, just so she can fold her arms and pout. She says, As you can see, gesturing towards her kids, I have a lot going on, and I need that spot more than you do. You only have one child. I have six. Now, I knew the difference between disabled parking and those spaces reserved for parents with small children. So I said something along the lines of, You need a disabled batch to park there. It doesn't matter how many kids you have. 
and this woman took major offense. She then goes off on a major rant about how being a mother of all her children was so hard, how she was having an awful day, and how it's not fair that my mom, who looked perfectly fine, had tricked the government into getting a badge that lets her park in a spot that Karen should obviously have instead. As she rambles about this, she looks around, garnering the attention of other shoppers, screaming that my mom isn't allowed to park here because she's not really disabled, giving everybody the, don't you agree with me, look. My mom then grabs my hand and tries to lead me around Karen, ignoring her entirely. But Karen keeps stepping in front of my mom, demanding her spot. She's getting increasingly annoyed slash loud. I remember asking my mom several times if I'd done something wrong because my response seemed to have triggered this rant, but she kept reassuring me that it was fine and that I should just ignore this Karen, which annoyed her even more. This goes on for about five very long minutes before my mom finally snaps and says, I have only one arm, silencing Karen mid-sentence. Now, I used to wonder why she didn't just tell Karen the specifics earlier, but as I've grown up, I've come to realize that it's not anybody else's business, and I can see why my mom wouldn't take her jacket off, and to pop the prosthetic off just to prove something. So we begin to walk around Karen again, but barely make it five feet before we hear Karen screaming, that's utter BS, and that my mom is lying. Now what happens next is seared into my brain. Karen storms up to my mom and tries to undress her, and she's just shaking and calling my mom a liar. And my mom goes into full fight to the death mode because physical altercations are obviously more intense and scary for her. Now this couldn't have lasted longer than 30 seconds, but it was enough time for people to stop and gather, but not enough time for anybody to react or put a stop to it. Now I can't imagine what it must have looked like, but somehow Karen manages to yank my mom's denim jacket off of her and pops her prosthetic off crashing it to the ground and resulting in a universal gasp that shook the entire parking lot. All that's left on my mom's arm at this point is the suction pad and the sharp nail-like hook that slots into the prosthetic. A woman from the crowd then picked up my mom's arm and handed it to her before going off on Karen, who's smaller than me at this point. People start shouting to get security, etc., and Karen rallies her spawn and they all run for her car. I still remember her kids yelling for her not to leave them. My mom was visibly shaken by the incident. She then insists that she's fine and she doesn't want police or doesn't want the fuss, and we go about our shop. When we got to the checkout about 20 or 30 minutes later, a few people that had witnessed the whole thing had gathered and insisted that they pay for my mom's stuff, which she then reluctantly accepted. And then they helped us take all the shopping out to the car. Guys, that woman is so stupidly entitled that she thought having six kids is enough for her to take up a handicap spot. She's also not entitled to see any kind of proof or even ask for one. Like, if you're certain someone misuses the parking spot, just call the police. Don't try to rip off their jacket to see if they're missing an arm. The sad part is, the woman was never arrested, nor was charged for this ridiculous behavior, so she's probably still out there harassing people who park in these spots. So, my mother-in-law is the queen of entitlement. Her youngest daughter is six months younger than my oldest daughter. She and my wife were pregnant together for three months, and it was hell. Anyway, when the girls were turning seven years old, my daughter wanted a party at the skating rink, so mother-in-law convinced my wife to combine the parties. Fine. Whatever. Except that she also threw a party for her daughter the night before the skating rink party, in case someone couldn't attend the real party. So, when we were all at the skating rink and the kids are having fun, mother-in-law notices that my daughter has a slightly bigger pile of presents than her daughter. She then starts complaining that people are showing up without presents for both kids. Now, this isn't whining. She is spitting venom and trying to get the other adults to hate on those who didn't bring her daughter a present. Now, most of these people had attended the birthday party the night before and had given her the presents then, so they didn't bring one to the second party. Mother-in-law then says, Listen, if you're invited to two parties, you should bring a present for each party, which was asinine enough. But then father-in-law and his brother arrives. Now, my in-laws had been divorced for 18 years. When father-in-law and brother show up with only presents for my daughter, mother-in-law goes absolutely nuts. Now, sister-in-law has quite a load of gifts, and all the gifts from the night before. She's enjoying herself with the other kids, so she doesn't notice that my daughter has a few more gifts than she does. This is all my mother-in-law throwing a fit. 
She then tells my wife that if father-in-law didn't want to bring presents for her daughter, then she shouldn't have come at all. My wife had had enough at this point, and she finally goes off. She tells mother-in-law that father-in-law had no idea the parties were combined, and that he's here to see his grandchild, and that sister-in-law has more than enough presents at home and we will never be combining birthdays again. Mother-in-law then pretended to suddenly feel sick and she went home early, leaving us to clean up the party package that she insisted we spring for, but hardly needed. Wowza guys, that mother-in-law is definitely super duper entitled. Hosting two parties and demanding people bring two separate gifts on both days. Absolutely ridiculous. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, we survived another one. If you enjoyed the stories today, do give it a thumbs up. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. Opie's 51-year-old sister cries to mama because she didn't get a free house. Check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.